Hi, Rob McKillop here. We're looking through my book, uh, playing the ukulele in fifth tuning. And there are sound files for this book for which I used um, a plectrum, a pick. But here we're using finger style just to show it can be done either way. And uh, I'll talk you through the exercises. Uh, there are nine of them, so we'll go fairly quickly, but uh, I'll point out the little difficulties along the way you might have to think about. Um, if you saw the first video, we're alternating thumb and index generally. So exercise one, uh, three, four. Now, I didn't have my pinky down there. I could do it again with the pinky placement. When you place your pinky on the soundboard, uh, you don't have to, but some people do, and I do sometimes, um, it's not planted down. You're not pushing. There should be no tension in that. It should just accidentally hit the soundboard, touch it, and it often comes off. You know? So don't think you're pressing down. It's not an anchor. I hear people say it's an anchor not an anchor that induces tension you just want to feel feel the soundboard a little bit okay number two exercise two um well, let's play it first. Three, four. Okay, now there's, when we're alternating thumb and index, thumb on strong beats, index on weak beats, um, from bar 9 for a couple of lines we get an interesting uh, thing happening where the thumb is on the third string and then the index on the fourth string. You might be tempted to do that the other way around. But remember we're trying to bring out the accents strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. So don't change around, don't have the weak finger on the weak, on the strong beat. Okay, um, number play that a bit faster. <laughs> I might play that a bit faster. When you just get two beats in a bar, like in the first bar, you have an option, because they're both on strong beats, if you imagine four notes in a bar, it'd be strong, weak, strong, weak. So these are both strong, so you might play them both thumb into the next.
next bar. Or you might choose to make the second one a bit quieter. No, it's up to you. I use both in that uh, little excerpt there. Exercise five. Um, let's play it first. One, two, three, four. issue of two notes being on the same fret one after the other so in bar three we have the second fret on the first string and then the second fret on the second string now you don't want to use the first finger and then jump because that makes the first note staccato also if you do a bar both notes are ringing on but this is a melodic line it's not an arpeggio that we're, we're wanting to ring on so we have to do something else. It looks like a, a bar across two strings. Play the first note and then see that I change the, the tension of where I put in. So the, at the beginning the tension is round about here to get that first string and then I push it over so the first string is dead and gone. Okay. Now it's a subtle thing but you know it adds up all these subtle things that make a difference. And then in bar five, six, seven, bar seven, we have a two, a five on the second string, and then a five on the first string. Now you don't want to be going again, it makes the first note staccato. So in this instance, I do use a bar. Now it's very hard to do what I was talking about with the first finger. You make your tensions down, and then you do that. So that is a possibility. You have to be careful with that one. The one I chose to use, alternate uh, technique, was used to th finger three and finger four. So I get, and it's much smoother than any of the other approaches. Something to think about. Exercise seven. Um, see, one, two, three, four. that same problem before the second fret on both strings. Um, there's also a little bit, uh, you may have seen me damping the strings. I think when I got to the end of the second line, here's the second line. There's all this sympathetic resonance <laughs> uh, ringing on. And there's a rest in the music. so. Uh, Oops. So what I did was stop it, just tapping my index finger to stop that resonance. Again, a subtle thing, but uh, all these subtle things add up to a more polished performance. Uh, exercise 14, page 19. Uh, one, two, three, four. there we do have um, an instance in bar six where the thumb is on the first string index on the second we've covered that in an earlier um, exercise it's quite common in fiddle music or cello music in this case okay here's a longer piece number 17 let's see what's in here Three, uh, well I'm going to count four uh, eighth notes quavers 
One, two, three, four. Okay, the one new thing we have here is what's called a tie over the bar line. You'll see it between uh, bars 18 and 19. We have the last note of 18 is 2, and it's got a, a curved line, meaning it's tied over the bar, so we don't play the first two that's on the downbeat of bar 19. Uh, we play the second two. Well, there are three twos all together. We play the first, not the second. We play the third. So it's tied over. So if I go from two bars before where these two fives are, one and now I'll go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, when you come in after the tie, the note you're playing is on a weak beat. So you must be sure to put your index finger on that. So the strong beat is on the zero and index again on the last note. So again, going back from those two fives. Love that note. Okay, so there's one in bar 20 going into 21. So have a look at those rests. They're important for making sure when you come out of the rest, you're using your index finger in these instances. Exercise 23. Um, let's see what we have here. Again, 16th notes. Don't panic. Doesn't mean it's fast. But you can play this one faster. Uh, but here goes nice and slow. One, two, three. <laughs> It's fairly straightforward for the technique of thumb and index, um, but it does introduce what's called a sequence, and you get this in a lot of music, where you get the same thing being repeated, maybe in different pitch intervals. Um, so you get this. So on. It just keeps going, that, that sequence. Okay, the last piece, uh, exercise 29, it's called, um, here we go, one, two, three. Actually, this one, I'm going to play faster, and uh, uh, we'll hear the, the beats, I'm trying to do a downbeat on each bar, but because there's three notes in a bar, thumb, index, thumb, the last note of each bar is a thumb, and then I have to repeat the thumb. So. One, two, three. Um, so that's uh, the exercises from Piatti's cello method book. 
Uh, they fit really well on the ukulele and they'll put you in a good stead for taking on the music of Bach later or even traditional music, jigs and reels. Uh, they also benefit from this thumb index thing. So there you go. Um, download, make sure you download the sound files that come with the book. There's a link on the inside of the cover there.